you, you're from Atlantic City, right? Yes. You ran a giant airport down there. That's what Dan was telling me. You yes. know, pretty large. FAA, Coast Guard, Air Marshals, uh, Air Guard. Yeah, a lot of. So this is activity. this is easy duty. Would you compare? Um, that? It's different. Yeah. There's different groups, different lines of business here. That you know. Uh, it's on a little bit smaller scale. Yep. As I was saying, we had uh, maybe less operations, number of flights, but we had a lot more uh, commercial passengers going through on larger airplanes. We had a lot of Airbus activity. When you came here, you had a big mess to clean up. Did, would you uh, say that or no? I'd say it was, I don't know if I'd term it as a mess. There were a lot of issues that need to be resolved. Yeah. Um, but it's, I mean, you know, he had a different know, way of doing business. He did. The contractor. Uh, had a very innovative idea. They knew they had to get this project done in a timely manner. Hold up. Yep. That's our security guy in the oh, police, yeah. so check in with them. So the, the contractor came up with the idea of creating this, we call it the box, but the structure that would encapsulate the control tower because they knew they had to work through bad weather to get the job done on the island. And uh, it worked out very well. They're getting ready to remove it now. You'll start to see what the new control tower is going to look like. Yeah, the old, the other control tower is very old and out of date. Um, from a number of perspectives, the, the, the actual structure itself, the equipment. So this will be all new equipment as well. Or for the most part, it'll be a lot of new equipment for the controllers too. <coughs> now your job as the the manager the airport manager. Are you responsible for bringing business into the... Yes. Yes. For making sure that this is a viable business activity. Well, a lot of people are thinking that it's not right now. You know that. <laughs> I, I understand. So but, what, what, well, what can I, you I, I do? Guess, what are your thoughts on that? I, I guess it, it confuses me a little because we have made significant progress over the past three years um, in terms of our business uh, aspect and financial perspective. Okay. We're doing fairly well financially. Um, it, and where does most of that money come from? The sale of fuel. To, right, to uh, the jets. To the private corporate jets as well as the seasonal and year-round operators. So fuel is where the money's at. Not yes. not so much the landing and the takeoff and the storage of the, the plane, but that's some of it. That is some, but that is, if you will, offsetting cost. It's not necessarily the profit side as much. Um, How much does it hurt us when uh, Island Air picked up and left. How, how it, much does that It, it hurt it? significantly from a financial perspective. Um, we can absorb some of that. Okay. We can go down and just make a turn around okay. the there. Um, we'll absorb some of that. I think the bigger impact was the actual level of service for the islanders, the year-round folks. Yeah. For us to get to the mainland now, it's very limited, and and that's where the real impact was. Um, in addition to, as I was saying earlier, we have aeronautical and non-aeronautical things. Let me just stop here sure. if I can. Yeah. So there's a number of hangars here. Right. This one is owned by a company called Emily Air. Number one. Yes. Yeah. Which um, was Tom Cunningham was also associated with Island Air. Oh yeah. They're looking to sublease that to. Uh, that's open for business. For, it, for it's someone actually, who to? they're considering subleasing it to a company called Blade, which is very innovative uh, operation. It's basically an app-based air service provider, kind of like the Uber of the oh. skies. Oh, cool. And um, well, they're, yeah, okay. So we're we're working with them to, to get that sublease. Okay. Hangers two, three, four are owned by the airport, and we have tenants in those hangars. Um, Five and six are owned by individuals, and we lease the land to them. Okay. So these are some of the aeronautical activities. We have, as I was saying, various aeronautical activities. We have what's over here, private, primarily aviation. We have our seasonal operation, our year-round service providers, and the corporate and GA, um, as well as some other tenants that you'll see as we go on here. But we also have non-aeronautical activities. We are the third largest land holder on the island. We have a lot of land, and we're going to be looking to lease some of that. But let me just, as we go through here, I'll sure. show you some of the more aeronautical. So sure. in this area, we have what are called tie downs, and we have on pavement as well as grass. And you can see there's a lot of cars in the corral now. Come summer, what will happen is there'll be a lot of airplanes and less cars. 
So the seasonal visitors or own second homeowners, whatever, bring their airplanes in and they park at these various tie downs. And these would be, these tie downs are not for jets, they're for private. They're private, private. yes. Yep. And then we have um, Hangar 9, which is a T-Hangers, and that's leased to an individual or company, and they sublease it to a number of private operators. I believe there's 13 or 14 T-Hangers there. Hangar number seven is uh, currently operated by Marine Home Center, oh, and okay. they have a few airplanes, Navajos, that they transport their uh, employees back and forth with. This was a hangar that was known for years as a Taylor hangar, and it fell into disrepair. Um, so working with the tailors, they worked with Marine, who uh, took the uh, facility, upgraded it, did a lot of repairs to it, a brand new hangar door, and now they run their operation through here. I think they own three airplanes. So they, they actually, I believe, control about half <coughs> of this hangar, and the other half is still just not under lease, but it's available. Who was doing the char the uh, air freight? Wasn't that? Well, a that's the next bill. Oh, that's the next one. Okay. Good. Yeah, that was a combination of Cape and Islands Air, and the facility actually, the lease we have is with uh, with Bill McGrath, and I'm sure you probably know. Of course. Bill was the interim sure. manager. Yes. Um, and Bill is in discussions with Cape Air about operating Hangar Eight, which is the freight hangar, and. This is for all large freight to come through this facility instead of through the terminal uh, with the security requirements after September 11th. It's something we need to do and also keeps down the traffic in the terminal, which during the summer can be very busy. Right. And right beyond here is where we have, um, it's, this is, this operation is Wiggins and Wiggins flies both for FedEx and UPS. Okay. So FedEx and UPS are right next to the freight building here. They were located down by Hangar 3 before, um, but this, when we had the opportunity with Marine moving, this was an old Marine area, Marine Home Center, we moved them down here because it creates a much uh, more desirable atmosphere, if you will, for moving airplanes around there. It was very congested. So. I would think that with Island Air out of the way, it would be better for Cape Air, business-wise, and that they would try to like keep it, it for themselves it, rather it than is, get anybody else in here. What I think everyone needs to understand is that the market is still limited um, in terms of Hyannis because of the competition with the fast ferries. I know. that's got that. I remember... Dave, could you hold up for just a minute, please? Um, so the, the market is very limited. and. So for Cape Air to do it, they have to do it right in order to make sure that they're still, you know, profitable if they can be. Uh, it, it was very competitive before, and as the market shrunk, it, you know, that's part of the reason Island Air was unable to do it. They only had that one route. They didn't have any diversification. Uh, there was a time when you could fly to High Annis for a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. The price to fly has gone so high that I think that's why the competition is tougher, right? It is. Is there a reason why that's happening? Um, the best I could say, and I don't want to speak for the airlines, but... I mean, fuel up prices. Fuel's down, down but, but airplanes are not designed to go short distances. That's not where they're economical. The longer they fly, the more economical they become. Right. So you have a number of issues. The, the cost of the airplane, uh, the cost of operating at the airport, all, all those things taken into consideration, it, it's just difficult to operate um, and make money. You need, you know, there's, where I came from in Atlantic City, we had a low fare operator, but they're also a low cost operator. You may remember there are a number of airlines who tried to get into the low fare business, but they didn't have a low cost structure and they would go out of business. There's a whole slew of them sure. you can name. Um, without a low cost structure, you can't have low fares. And to have a low cost structure is, is very difficult, especially operating in an island, island environment. Right. So. I so just, you've got to be more creative, and that's where. And you you need to diversify too. Diversify. As I said, you can, you know, when the fast boat came along, it's technology, it's advancement, it's a good thing for the island because it's better service. But I believe this summer, I think we're going to have in the neighborhood of twelve fast boats yeah, a day. That's right. Different from so, different places too. Uh, you know, I, it is what it is. Yeah. W the airlines need to look and reinvent themselves and say, is are there other markets that make sense? You know, what what can we do here?